Has anyone ever told you, stand up straight? <laughs> Comments like that might be annoying, but they're not wrong. Do you think we have a posture epidemic? Yeah. Yeah, no, no doubt. Fix your poxter in just three moves permanently. Fix my rounded upper back, kind of look like this. And you kind of came to me looking like this. This like sort of thing starts to happen. Oh God, no, yeah, just our lives are becoming lives this right now, you know? And it's not going away. Sitting at desk all day long and looking at your smartphone developed a poor posture for many people. Forward head posture, which is something that is honestly becoming a lot more prominent nowadays due to increased technology use. Consequence of how we live our lives lives with books, with smartphones, with iPads, with computers. Sitting in front of computers, driving our cars, texting on our phones. Gravity, your cell phone, watching TV, driving the car, pretty much everything we do promotes yeah. this. If we have a job where it requires us to spend a lot of time sitting. Very common problem that's caused by a lot of the sitting that we do. It's an abnormal posture. These dysfunctional adaptations impair your body's ability. What really gets the short end of the stick here is your back, and living with back pain is a nightmare. Those muscle gains would be possible had he not first fixed his posture. It's going to make a big difference on your life. In your life, in your neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, it affects a lot of things that you would never think that it does affect. That is absolutely wrecking your body and your workouts. The joints of the spine or the bony portions of the spine can now become more degenerative over time. So you're placing more stress on the spine. Over time, the spine naturally degenerates. Poor posture inflicts extra wear and tear on your joints and ligaments, increases the likelihood of accidents, and makes some organs less efficient. It is really becoming problematic. I don't know how. I really get scared thinking about this next generation. Next generation. Next generation. We're all gonna die. Please, people, for all that is good in health and well-being, do not give in to this fear-mongering. Health professionals preach it, you learn it in university, it's on social media, and it's even on reputable health resources such as the NHS UK. Common posture mistakes and fixes. WebMD, nine tips for better posture. Do not slouch. Musculoskeletal Australia, tips for good posture. Harvard Medical School, why good posture matters. If you haven't noticed by now, the title of this video is completely satirical. It's like a fever dream. Posture this, ergonomics that, back care, sleeping positions. I see it everywhere and it's, it's time, time to, to stop. stop. It's time to stop, okay? No more. Where the f*** are your parents? All right, talking about the relationship between posture and pain, I'm just gonna jump straight into it. So a lot of health professionals, specialists, and even fitness gurus claim that posture is related to pain. But I wanna show you some emerging evidence that actually states otherwise. So first of all, we hear a lot about forward head posture and how that may be related to increased technology use and poor posture and poor habits in a day-to-day -day situation. So here's a study published by the Brazilian Journal of Physical Therapy in 2018. Is forward head posture relevant to cervical muscles performance and neck pain? A case controlled study. For those who do not know, cervical muscles or the cervical region of the spine is obviously basically the neck. The spine has four different segments, starting from cervical, goes to thoracic, down to lumbar and the lower back, and then eventually to the sacrum and the coccyx. And they basically concluded that forward head posture does not explain pain and disability. How did they actually do this? They took 32 subjects with chronic neck pain and compared them with 35 subjects with no neck pain. Using various different assessments and outcome measures, such as a pain scale, measuring forward head posture, doing endurance tests, and even ultrasonography imaging, which is ultrasound, and comparing these results, they found that no significant difference was found between the demographic characteristics of the two groups. Forward head posture angles were not significantly different between painful and pain-free groups. Forward head angles were not correlated to levels of pain or disability in those with chronic neck pain. Forward head angles were not correlated with neck muscle endurance as well. However, neck muscle size was significantly smaller in those with 
chronic neck pain compared to those without neck pain. Another study from 2018 published by the European Spine Journal wanted to investigate whether there is an association between text neck and neck pain. They observed 150 18 to 21 year old young adults. They had to answer a self-report questionnaire and their neck posture was assessed by physiotherapists during a mobile phone texting message task. Results were collated and they found that there was no association between neck posture and neck pain within the participants. A similar article was published this year by the Journal of Bodywork and Movement Therapies. They basically got 238 university students aging from 18 to 30 years old and again used various different neck assessments like the visual analog scale which is a pain score pain drawing, the neck disability index, which is an outcome measure, and measuring cervical range of movement. They found that posture and time spent using a smartphone are not correlated with neck pain and disability in young adults yet again. 42.4% of the participants reported mild pain, 8.4% reported moderate pain, and 49.2% reported no pain at all. And the pain categories did not influence the variables. So if they had no pain or if they did have pain, the findings through the assessment was not significant. Concluding, while half of young medical students reported neck pain, the use of smartphones was not correlated with neck pain and disability. Let's talk a little bit about low back pain. This article published in 2018 from the Journal of Biomechanics assessed different postural orientations and different upright standing postures in 353 asymptomatic subjects. That means it was 353 people who did not present with back pain and 83 patients who did have lower back pain. They had their posture assessed and measured six times in one day. And despite being instructed to stand on their normal posture on each assessment, there was wide variation in the lumbar and sacral angles in the same individual. And there was no significant difference in the individual postural variation between those with back pain and the healthy subjects. Are you starting to see a little bit of a theme here? So those who present without back or neck pain and those who present with back pain or neck pain have such high variability in their posture that it doesn't even matter. You are not able to conclude that a person's pain is coming from their posture because there are thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people who have bad posture and still present without pain. Not convinced? Here's a study published by the Journal of Manipulative and Physiological Therapeutics in 2008. And it was a literature review, meaning that they analyzed the findings of 54 original studies that had been made before it or published before it. They wanted to determine whether sagittal spinal curves are associated with health. Sagittal meaning they only included spine studies within the frontal plane. They wanted to estimate the strength of such associations and consider whether these relationships are likely to be causal. So does the posture cause pain? In the end, they found no strong evidence for any association between spinal curves and health outcomes, including spinal pain. So within epidemiological studies, meaning within an entire population, they found no support with the association between spinal curves and spinal pain. This study from 2003, published by the Journal of Clinical Anatomy, used an MRI to assess the differences within their lumbar lordosis or lower back posture within 27 patients with low back pain and 19 patients with no back pain. Plus they got 10 volunteers who also had no back pain to join in on the study. They found no difference in the degree of their lordotic curve, which is their lower back curve among women with or without back pain. They were unable to demonstrate any significant variation in lordosis with age, nor could they demonstrate any difference in the degree of lordosis among women without or with low back pain. And this study from 2016 from Applied Ergonomics showed that people that are completely pain-free actually slump in their posture. So during sitting and standing tasks, they did not have perfect posture, they did not have an ideal posture, but yet they were completely pain-free. So technology and poor postural habits may have the potential to worsen your posture, but that doesn't necessarily have any negative. So yeah. Cody! But that doesn't necessarily have a negative effect on your health outcomes or your pain. You know what else definitely has the potential to worsen your posture? Age. This study from 2017 from the European Spine Journal showed a gradual increase in thoracic and neck postures amongst an aging population. But what's great? 
they were all asymptomatic, meaning they got worse with age, but they were all completely active and pain free. So what if you have identified or somebody else has told you that you have a bad posture or you were born with an anterior pelvic tilt? Maybe you have back pain and your physiotherapist told you that you have an anterior pelvic tilt that could be contributing to your back pain. Well, this study published in 2008 from Priest and colleagues showed that you cannot clinically assess an anterior pelvic tilt because of everybody's differences in anatomical morphology. Everybody is born different. Everybody has different muscle lengths, ligaments, lengths, and bone structure. They looked at 30 bony pelvises within dissecting rooms at the University of Manchester. 20 of them were male and 10 were female, aligned them and measured them. And they found a large variation between the size and degrees of the bony landmarks, a large variation in pelvic morphology and a large variation of asymmetry. Physiotherapists often try to assess anterior pelvic tilt by measuring the angle of the anterior superior iliac spine from the posterior to superior iliac spine. These are bony prominences on the front and the back of your pelvis. But the study showed such variance in degrees of the pelvis within only 30 subjects, which means any attempt at trying to measure for an anterior pelvic tilt by feeling and observing a patient is completely weak. Not only that, but an anterior pelvic tilt is completely normal. In this study published in 2011 from Harrington and colleagues, they wanted to report the typical pelvic angle of an ACE symptomatic population and also the degree of side to side symmetry that may exist within the pelvis. They did this with 120 healthy subjects and they found that 85% of their male subjects and 75% of the female subjects presented with an anterior pelvic tilt. This was measured using calipers to determine the angle between the ASIS and the PSIS of the patients. An assessment that we saw from the last study that is completely non-reliable. Lastly, what about its effects on shoulder impingement and shoulder pain? Because we often find that posture could be related to shoulder pain and it could be related to impingement and having tight muscles at the front could potentially have detrimental effects to your pain and performance. Well, there was a study published in 2005 from the Journal of Shoulder and Elbow Surgery that showed that there was not enough evidence supporting the hypothesis that posture and muscle imbalance are involved in subacrobial impingement syndrome. What is interesting is that people who are asymptomatic had a greater degree of forward head posture compared to those who were symptomatic. What did they find? That the patients who were symptomatic or had shoulder pain were simply older than the patients who were asymptomatic. So now we're thinking maybe posture isn't related to pain, but maybe my habits could be impeding my performance. Maybe sitting all day could cause me to have tight hip flexors and this could change my postural alignment. Maybe you had pain and you were prescribed corrective exercises from a specialist, from a physiotherapist, biochemist, personal trainer, chiropractor, strength and conditioning coach, and you found that these corrective exercises actually gave you a lot of benefit. Firstly, you don't really have to worry about tight hip flexors. They measured hip range of motion and saw if it determined any difference within standing pelvic tilt, standing lordosis, and even abdominal muscle performance. This was published by the Journal of Orthopedic and Sports Physical Therapy in 1990. 1990! 30 years and it showed that the variables are completely unrelated. So it begs the question, can posture even be changed? Maybe I want it for aesthetic purposes. Maybe I want to stretch out certain structures just so I can present myself a little bit better in your opinion. This study in 2018 published by Physiotherapy Theory and Practice was a systematic review and a meta-analysis on scapular focused interventions to improve shoulder pain and function with subacromial pain. And they found that there was no difference between pec minor length and forward shoulder posture in people who had received a scapular focused intervention to address their posture. So even after receiving a guided exercise program to address their shoulder posture, it didn't change after the corrective exercises. So what type of exercises should I do if I present with something that is abnormal in my posture or if I have pain? Well, let me hit you with a burst review. In the Journal of Exercise Rehabilitation, Talk and colleagues this year showed that corrective exercise does not correct posture any better than other exercise. In 2013, Romano and colleagues showed that corrective exercise doesn't correct scoliosis better than any other exercise. In 2019, 
Maloney and colleagues found that corrective exercise does not correct imbalances better than any other exercise. In 2014, Smith and colleagues found that corrective exercise doesn't correct back pain better than any other exercise. In 2018, Sato and colleagues found that corrective exercise does not correct shoulder pain better than any other exercise. So what is the main takeaway from that? The only corrective exercise is the one getting done. Just do strengthening exercises and you'll find massive improvements. Slatter and colleagues in the Journal of Orthopedic and Sports Physiotherapy released an article last year that sums it up perfectly. It is called Sit Up Straight, Time to Reevaluate. So if you learned anything today, what can you take away from this? There is no single correct posture. Variations in posture are normal. The best posture is a comfortable one. Our spines are robust and adaptable. Sitting is not dangerous and one size does not fit everybody. We need to reframe the fixation of fixing posture. Instead of a problem with posture, it's a problem of a lack of moving. Yeah, sure, there are positions that can hurt. One posture is not ideal for everybody. There's not an ideal that guarantees that you're going to be pain-free. And there's no gold standard posture that has been identified. This is a very prevalent belief that people associate with pain, but there is not really a need for postural assessments. Pain is a multi-dimensional, multifactorial, multifaceted phenomenon that is poorly correlated with posture. People need to think holistically and look at every single aspect of your life that could be contributing to your pain and not just posture. Your posture is as unique as you are. And no one posture is any better or any worse than another. So that's about it. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave them down below. Subscribe, like, what more can I say? Thank you for watching and goodbye.